Ladies and gentlemen, we are standing on historical ground. This is the oldest research post for meteorological forest experiments. In 1876, measurements for meteorology in fields and forests were communicated across the world. This is an excellent environment to show that we must not forget the past if we wish to understand the present and shape the future. So Carsten, please continue. With this technology, developed by Dryad, we start from historical ground and work toward the future. The aim of our technology is to research the forest. At Dryad, we're developing a communication structure and planting sensors in the forest, sensors that provide information about its health status and protect the forest. These are the two crucial features we want to provide, information and protection. The so-called gateways are our bases, providing the communication infrastructure for the sensors in the forest. Up there, you see one such gateway. This gateway provides communication with the sensors and also to the Internet via 4G and LTE. It is a bridge between our sensors and the world of the Internet. This is one of the sensors we install in the forest. The sensor measures environmental data such as temperature, air humidity, and air pressure. It also contains smoke detectors, which set off an alarm in case of fire. With these smoke gas sensors, we aim to detect forest fires at a very early stage, that is, at the smoldering stage, before a larger area is ablaze and visible for kilometers. With respect to forest fires, that's our USB. That is what sets us apart. Another thing that is important to us is the collection of data relevant to the health status of the forest. The dendrometer measures the tree's growth. As you can see, this implementation uses a wired solution for the data transfer. However, we envision radio transfer. Radio transfer via the Dryad gateway to the Dryad online platform. Other underground systems measure the soil's humidity at 30, 50 and 100 centimeter levels. This tells us how much water is available for the tree. For now these sensors are wired. Here too we will have a wireless solution for the connection to the Dryad analytical system via the Dryad gateways. Based on these parameters, we are able to develop forest management strategies to implement within the forest economy. We bring humidity to areas with broadleaf trees, which is also to the conifers' advantage. From an economical point of view, we can deliver a reliable, comprehensive and cost-effective database, which helps the forest manager determine how to further develop his forest. This is an ROI that we can actually calculate. With an improved data situation, forest managers will be able to increase their revenue. We focus on the Open Industrial Standard LoRa, which is currently leading in IoT. This allows us to include third-party sensors, sensors from other manufacturers, in our ecosystem. So we will not develop every sensor required by our clients ourselves. But you will open the platform for other providers? Exactly. There are LoRa sensors already available, so we don't need to develop every single sensor ourselves. We still want to have one sensor that would provide us with a real USB, particularly in the wildfire section, because there's nothing available on the market. In an area where nothing is available, we will develop something. 
In areas where there is something available, we can buy it. This is made possible by the gateway. As you can see, it has two antennas. The shorter one is the LTE antenna. The longer one is the LoRa antenna. We have installed a rather large one in order to bridge a long distance. This antenna has a range of about six kilometers, extending across the part of the forest we will visit shortly. What is special about these gateways is that they form a mesh. This means we can arrange a number of these gateways in the field. With every gateway we bring to the area, we will expand the area of coverage. The gateways themselves will not require a 4G connection. We call this a border gateway. This here is a border gateway, as it has an LTE connection to both the Internet and the LoRa interface. We will also have so-called mesh gateways with only one antenna, connecting LoRa to LoRa to LoRa, until one of them reaches a border gateway and will then pass the information on to the Internet. This is a real USB, so far the first of its kind and invented by us. Our patent for this solution is spending. It protects the specific concept of being able to expand LoRa into random areas. This factor is essential in our type of usage, as in these extremely large areas there is no network coverage. We have developed this patent together with an attorney and we expect it to be issued within about a year or a year and a half. How will this apparatus be constructed in the field? Will you use something like this pole? The devices will be installed on a tree together with the solar unit in order to provide power for the gateways. Directly onto the tree so it will be self-sufficient. It will be completely self-sufficient. With a battery for buffering, we use supercapacitators as we don't want to bring fire accelerants to the woods. As we all know, lithium-ion batteries are a fire hazard, something you don't want in the woods if you wish to protect them. You have self-sufficient power provision, is that checked too? That has been tested, yes. And for the sensors too. We don't use lithium batteries anywhere. Instead, we use supercapacitators for the buffering of the solar power. That is also an important point. With the help of Mr. Bönig, we have submitted an application for our power provision patent too. So we've already applied for a patent for the energy harvesting, which includes the power collection through the solar panels, the power buffering in a supercapacitator and the reduced use of energy by shutting down the radio unit. That is what the patent describes in the sensor. That means we will have a patent granting us a USB in the area of sensors as well. So the sensor wakes up for the measurement and then goes back to sleep. Right, it's on standby most of the time, but more importantly, it completely shuts down the radio connection as long as it doesn't have anything to say. Next, we will all drive out to our target object, six kilometers as the crow flies from here, where in the forest there are the sensors that our gateways connect to. There, as an experiment, we will simulate a forest fire. We don't need to take the system down from the tree, unless it is broken or needs to be exchanged. There's actually no limit on the operating hours. Our concept is designed for an operating time of 15 years. This device, however, is not yet designed for cereal production. It's a minimum viable product, something we developed in the lab, produced in Germany, not yet ready for mass production in Asia. It's also still rather large. Our aim is to produce a smaller, more integrated system. All electronics will be placed inside the solar panel itself, meaning it will be as slim as the solar tile. This sensor here contains environmental sensors for temperature, air humidity and air pressure. 
These sensors describe the forest's microclimate, which may also help to predict a fire, since we can observe a rise in temperature and in dryness over a longer period of time. When, during the smoldering phase, organic material is burnt, the first thing that appears is hydrogen gas. The hydrogen concentration in the air rises, and this is an increase we can measure. The small concentration range is called PPM. We aim to develop a two-level system, smoke plus hydrogen concentration. The reason for this double-step implementation is energy efficiency. For the optical sensor, we need only very little energy, whereas the hydrogen sensor needs to be preheated. It therefore uses more energy and cannot be constantly operative. The optical sensor can determine with some, with high probability, that this may be a forest fire. The hydrogen detector is then started as needed and can verify whether it is indeed a fire. As soon as this is verified, we use the radio interface to send an alarm to the central node, which will then inform you directly, via email, with geodata and a map, where the fire was detected with a precision of 10 meters. We will therefore be able to tell you where exactly you need to go and you will, with relatively small equipment, be able to find and extinguish a forest fire while it is still at a developing stage. Our approach is designed to detect fires at the smoldering stage and not, like the existing fire watch system, only when the fire has become large enough to see the smoke plume at a distance of 16 kilometers. We want to detect fires as soon as they begin to develop on the ground. The sensors send a signal and Carsten gets a ping. First signal just arrived, okay. Uh, huh? You got the ping? I got it already? Two. Oh, all right, did I miss them? Oh, that was quick. Oh, I have, I have two for past, I um, missed two already. Two, miles, and two, have gemeldet. two of them have already reported, and when they do, you get um, a push message. Genau. Ja, jetzt kommt er. It has sent coordinates and a map showing which sensor sent the report. So two of the sensors have now sent their reports. You can then click on Google Maps directly and the firefighters can go there right away. With the help of Google Maps, I can go directly to wherever the sensor is. The email can then be forwarded to the fire truck, can immediately be forwarded to the fire truck, and they can go there directly without losing any time. So that's the distance between the sensor and the gateway actually. So we get the coordinates from the control center and right away know where to go? Yes, that's right. It gives the graph for the three values, humidity, temperature and pressure. Ja, kommt dann Mal, insbesondere OEM.